Hello, 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 and welcome back. Not that loud. So, the guest we have today, Kid Karma, is in the studio right now. Feel free to say hi. Hi. Say that again. Hello. I'm t I'm getting the microphone set up. So, uh, what do you have for us to start off? Or better question, who are you, Kid Karma? Um, from a small town. Uh, Southern California. Um, I'm a student in Santa Barbara, and uh, I just want to share a few songs. I uh, haven't recorded any of these officially or anything, but I just thought it would be a good way to get them out there. So what I'm hearing is this is the very first time anybody outside of in person will ever hear these songs from you. Yeah. <laughs> you're, in for, you're in for a treat, listeners. Kid Karma is premiering on KCSB. FM, his songs right now, all originals. What's the first one you got? Um, it's called uh, Valentine's Vampire. Valentine's Vampire. Yeah. You want to just start it off? For sure. Yep. All right. Go for it. So unsteady, everything is way too heavy She's laughing at my jokes again I sure ain't funny, but that smile's made of honey It looks like I've gotta make amends Cause I'm a hypocrite, it's true And I have to admit that you're the only light that I can see Yes, I'm a hypocrite, I guess I'm just a better fit for borderlines and hints of jealousy Cause I'm a sucker for you and every little thing you do But I'm so tired of being the Valentine's Vampire I die in my sleep last night Because she acts like I'm not even here Guess I deserve every ounce of silence But it's bringing me halfway to tears Cause I'm an idiot In fact, I'm fucking killing it It's like she's looking through a mirror at me Yes, I'm an idiot and utterly oblivious to borderlines and hints of jealousy And I'm a sucker for you and every little thing you do But I'm so tired of being the Valentine's vampire Cornea's worth it cause I'm seeing the sunlight Sunlight I started drinking blood for fun What's this monster I've become? Thank you Wow <laughs> Thanks so much That was really good <laughs> Thank you Um so what's the story behind it? Uh, you want me to say a couple words about the song? Okay, Go so, um, uh, well, my birthday is February 15th. It's the day after Valentine's. And I have an eye condition where I have to wear sunglasses outside um, every time the sun's out or just even just during the day because my right pupil is uh, constricted open because I got hit in the eye with a baseball and so it's... The muscles don't work anymore. So I'm constantly outside wearing sunglasses. My birthday is after Valentine's. I like to wear black because I'm into emo music. So um, my friends would call me a vampire sometimes. And the song just kind of came up. Um, there was... So those are... That's the... Uh, I want to say that's the base of the song. The like basic uh, groundwork. But the story that goes on top of those themes is that... There was a girl I was into, but she was like... 
a little bit younger than me, and I thought people would look down on me for it. So I didn't do anything about it, even though we were both into each other, I guess. And then um, when I did try to do something about it, it went really, really terribly, actually. Um, and then she stopped talking to me. So not every story has a happy ending. There you go. That's the story behind that song. <laughs> fun. Very fun. I know. God, I'm so... <laughs> You're all good. You're all good. Uh, yeah. We, uh, we're, we're setting the atmosphere for the midnight crowd. All the vampires in attendance. At oh, yeah. That, that works. It's, I guess it was a good opener. <laughs> um, yeah. Was Did, there... A, go ahead. Oh, no, good. I was just wondering if there was... If you wanted me to play the next song. <laughs> sure. But if you want... Uh, when did you write that song? Uh, I wrote that song, um, I wrote most of it when I was a sophomore in high school, so about 16. And then I think I finished the lyrics more recently, though, but I, I just changed the lyrics, really. Yeah. What did they used to be? Um, they were originally, like, a, they, 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 weren't, they were uninspired, I would say. It was just stuff that I thought sounded rela relatable to other people. Um, here, let me see if I have some of them, actually. Um, I have stuff about wearing black, um, being antisocial, um, I have this line, actually I like this line, I have a, I have a little bit of a rap verse I used, but I got rid of it because it didn't fit. That's fair. Yeah, because it, that, it, it didn't, it didn't need a rap verse. <laughs> um, oh, I, you know, I remember what this song, the song was originally about a different girl, I know, right? And so... But I just didn't have actually like feelings for her, so that was I just I just needed substance to write a song about, and like when I actually found real substance, I changed the lyrics. I remember that's what happened now. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that you wasted no time in uh, getting emotionally available for the radio. Oh yeah, no problem. We're, we're getting the you're getting the deep cuts. Yeah, this is of live. Kid Karma. <laughs> we got people listening. We have at least if we check the list. Uh, Nine people. Wow, full nine people. A full nine people. Well, hello, nine people. Um, the vast majority who are listening at this point are in cars, so we don't really know how many people oh, are. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. But okay. we got nine people on the online site. Got it. So if you're listening, you can listen to this uh, on 91.9 <laughs> or online at kcsb.org. All right, you want to play the next song? Mm hmm. Oh, sorry, don't want to cut you off. On oh, the no, phone. I was just. Yeah, no, we're chilling. Um, Hydration's important. Very. Okay. <laughs> Next song. Um, okay. Cool. Girl, it's freezing outside. Cause your cheeks are rosy red and my breath is in the sky. Girl, you needed advice When she comes to me for solace I think I'm too nice Because I feel so irrelevant Involuntary celibate Needed a distraction From a lack of action, girl It's all I ever want Well, here it goes again Socks are soaked all the way through It's cloudy California, so what should we do? And ooh, my sweaters are all feeling thin Let's go to catch a movie and maybe sleep in until two I think about you in hands I'm sticking gum into my ears to block out all the silence I really want a Mercedes But I'm cursed with lethargy cause the rest of the day She's playing with my head again It's getting hard to comprehend Why these rainy days won't ever go away for me It's all I ever want Well here it goes again Socks are soaked all the way through 
It's cloudy California, so what should we do? And ooh, my sweaters are all feeling thin Let's go to catch a movie and maybe sleep in until two Oh, 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 oh. I wanted her to ooh, oh, 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 oh. I wanted her to know We're listening to 91.9 KCSB FM in Santa Barbara. This program is called In the Spotlight. I'm Ryan Shabetta. Our engineer in the studio is Quill Sang. And our artist of the week, Kid Karma, the person you just heard perform live in studio, literally, right now. So what was that song called for those oh, just tuning right, in? Oh, right, of course. So um, that, was called, that one was called Cloudy California. I didn't couldn't come up with a clever title for it. I just named it the main chorus. <laughs> but um so you want backstory on that one? That would be great. Okay, cool. So um it was cloudy one day in California. <laughs> and no, uh, yeah, so that's no, actually I was thinking about it. I always wanted to write a song that was, you know, kinda of one of those stay in bed, don't get up, don't go to work, don't go to school it's kind of a song. Yes. And so, um, I actually got the chords from um, a song about being sad by Rex Orange County. Not exactly, but like um, just the main bass chord is F major seven. It's the main, it's the main um, chord of uh, the same song by Rex. But um, so, oh right, of course. The first verse is very straightforward. Talks about girl. It's freezing outside. I swear, I use the word girl in the song. It's so cliche. You're doing but. Fine. <laughs> But, uh, and I say, your cheeks are rosy red, like, uh, I, just reading it sounds awful, but the second verse I wrote, I think, like, six months later, when I was actually having real emotions, and so, it's, I think about you, and hence, um, I'm sticking gum into my ears to block out all the silence, so, could be weird, It'd be kind of gross to be sticking gum into your ears, but, um, Gum is actually a song by a band called Moose Blood, Ooh. that, um, I was listening to at the time, and was... Uh, sad, <laughs> and so I'm thinking about this person. Makes me sad about this girl, and so I'm sticking gum into yeah, whatever you get it. And then the next line is, I really want a Mercedes, but I'm cursed with lethargy because of the rest of the day she's. And yeah, you would be thinking it's Mercedes, like a car, which is normal. I mean, who doesn't want a Mercedes if you're like 16, of course? But <laughs> it's actually the Mercedes from uh, the book, The Count of Monte Cristo, Ooh, is the. Go ahead. So, you know, I'll, I'll explain. So, if you don't know uh, the story of the Count of Monte Cristo, basically, he's super popular guy. Everybody likes him. He has a super hot girlfriend who he's going to marry. Her name is Mercedes. And then there's three, it's three guys who, uh, I can't remember their names, but they get jealous of him. They're jealous of his success and fame and well-likedness. So, they frame him for crime, and they throw him in the prison of... Um, it's not Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo is different. But they throw him in this big prison on the island, and basically his sole purpose in life after that is to get revenge and get his woman back. So what I'm saying here is that I want a Mercedes. I want a motivation to get out of bed, to do whatever, or to do the things I need to do. So Mercedes is just a symbol. Is a symbol for something to get out of bed, I guess. And as well, that's the only the those are really the only deep lyrics in that song. That. So. That might be the deepest use of the word Mercedes <laughs> in all of music. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Getting um, a literary reference? Yeah, that was a good book. I read it in, like, freshman year, so... <laughs> high school. It, was, it looks like a fucking... Oh, it's like a Bible. It's huge. It's, it's all good. Um, is there anything else that I could say with that song? Um... No, not really. It's pretty straightforward other than that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, you, all these songs you've been writing have been like sophomore year of high school when you were 16, right? Yeah, so I'm pretty much going in chronological order, actually. Um, yeah, so... You're seeing the evolution of Kid Karma. <laughs> I, I have a few songs from... I think I started writing real songs my freshman year. 
Um, but those songs, I never completed because they were bad. Um, they had no, like, tempo to them. They were just notes mushed together. But uh, they kind of started formulating my sophomore year into actual songs, so that's why I'm starting off. Yeah. Of course. Um, water time. Oh, stay <laughs> hydrated. Hydration is important. Uh, you know, I was feeling kind of bad a couple hours ago, just like off in my day, and then I drank some water, and I felt better. This is a true story. Drink water. The magic of water. Drink water, drive safe, uh, be responsible if you're partying. If you're not partying, you're studying, get sleep. Sleep is the best study stat strategy. Z's get degrees. <clears throat> that This is my uh, summary of all the PSAs for the next two hours. <laughs> okay. Do you want me... Yeah. Do you want me to... Um, actually, I can just play the next song if you want. Do whatever you want. This okay. Is, this is your showcase, your okay. spotlight. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Because you're um, listening to In the Spotlight. <laughs> um, this song is... Wow, you thought the last two were sad. This one is this one is really sad. I wasn't this this isn't this is no actual personal connection to me. I just wrote it as like a story I had in my mind. And it's you know, music can be used like that as a way to explore other emotions, other stories. So that's what this is. Also it's really high for me, so I might mess it up a little bit. Let me just okay. <clears throat> Love me. Love me. Love me, love me. Lately she couldn't fall asleep. She's having trouble with her dreams because she solely loved me, loved me. One day when it was raining hard, she ripped up in her chest and gave me her heart. Well, I threw it away and then I laughed at her pain. Well, I didn't know she thought about me all the time, but it's no excuse for thinking it was all right. When blindfolds and dark tape, I can't even remember her face and four or five months passed and no one kept their promise all she asked was love me love me love me love me she died alone in her Sunday clothes well how come none of you can hear her ghost? Love me Love me I died alone, but I think I know what everybody says I gotta show But that's all I hear Their laughter is so clear Well, I hope she comes back and kills you in your sleep but I'm the worst of all because I made her bleed when blindfolds and duct tape I can't even remember her face And four or five months passed And no one kept her promise All she asked was save me and Pictures, connections breaking up I miss her when dead and she left me a note saying how she loved me, loved me, loved me, loved me, loved me. <clears throat> you are listening to KCSB FM. 91.9 in Santa Barbara. This is In the Spotlight, where we feature a new artist every week. This week's artist, Kid Karma, with the devastating Loved Me. Is it Love Me, Loved it's Me? Love Me. It's changes throughout the song intermittently, yeah. I'm not even sure what the storyline is, but I feel 
uh, wounded. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll also explain it. Um, basically, it's about a girl who kills herself. Um, and the singer, not actually me. Um, you can you can talk about this. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, as long as you don't swear, we're good. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. But, You're um, all good. You're all good. Uh, so, but the it. singer, um, the, the main character, basically he feels he's responsible for her death, and it's because that she was into him, and he rejected her, clearly in some pretty terrible kind of a way, like, he humiliated her when he did, and, um, the thing about it is that, like, afterwards, he feels remorse obviously and he's noticing how people despite what they say about like oh my gosh she was so like um she was so well loved by everybody she was such an important part of the community even though everybody knows she wasn't even though she was picked on even though she was made fun of and she was rumors were spread about her as soon as someone's dead apparently they're an, an angel and like i say in the song four or five months pass and then it's like it didn't happen so that's a real um upper that one really happy song um, <laughs> um like I, I actually did mess up on the lyrics a little earlier but um it's it turned out fine it's okay <laughs> i kind of wish i would have said the right lyrics but it's it, it doesn't make that big of a difference um i'm trying to think of anything you have the opportunity right now if you want all right do you want me to i can I, say what I, you want I, okay um, the original, the, I messed up in the second verse it's, of the song. It's slam, if you're worried about swearing, mm -hmm. if you recite it like slam poetry, it counts as the artwork. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, she died alone in her Sunday clothes. Well, why can't any of you hear her ghost? Love me. Love me. I bet her final days were like a blur. Remember all the guys who fucked her. Well, that's all I hear. Their laughter is so clear. So that was what it was supposed to be, but I messed up halfway through. <laughs> so okay. there's that. Again, that was slam poetry. That was not the interview. Thank you very much. The performance. Yes. Yes. Um, Back to the interview. Right. Um, oh, I like uh, the line blindfolds and duct tape. I just using that as a reference to people pretending they, didn't, they don't see things, pretending they don't um, say things that they really do about this person. And um, it's pretty. I think it's a pretty devastating song for people who actually go through this because it's a real thing that people do go through, and people and loved ones do pass away because of these horrible circumstances. And um, I was in a really great place when I wrote the song. So yeah, <laughs> I, I you can tell, right? I okay. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I know. No, I it's I was actually I'm. Totally, this has no relevance to me. It has it actually hasn't happened to me, or I don't even know anybody that's happened to. Just, I'm very glad. Yeah, thank you. I, I am too. I'm very grateful. You know, we're we're keeping people awake. Those, <laughs> the majority of our listeners are probably on a drive home, uh, in their yeah. cars. You know, it's past midnight. It's zero thirty-eight on my clock, which is twelve thirty-eight, and you might be falling a bit asleep. Well. If you hear a story about uh, romantic heartbreak and suicide, I don't <laughs> think you'll be falling asleep. So no, probably not. Kid Karma, thank you for your service. Oh, yeah, no problem. Of course. I didn't... Uh, okay. Um, I'll just play the next song. This one's a little uh, happier. Uh, this is a cool backstory behind it as well, but I will save that for after it's done. All right. All right. Stay tuned for the backstory. Hear the song right now. Kid Karma on KCSB.
So let the rain keep us in bed And say all of the things we should have said But I don't love you and you don't love me more Let's take a step back to way before When patience was a virtue in my mind And you were in on mine like all the time I try to let you in and you try to let me down As softly as you could to the concrete ground But come on baby, I don't really Wanna be your friend but I guess I could just pretend to be so close to you I'm doing a-okay, learning to walk away And fixing my mistakes Don't doubt me when I say I'm a try So good Cause I've been chasing tail like a twisted dog And running ever faster but I'm always wrong A broken record and a broken free fall Tired of cleaning cuts with alcohol To shake out all the butterflies from my shoes Cause all they ever do is make me lose I've got all of my friends and I got my family Kinda have all of the love I need Come on, baby, I don't really You need a girl, I got like 50 of them saying they love me every day I'm doing a-okay, learning to walk away And fixing my mistakes, don't doubt me when I say I'm a try so You're listening to 91.9 KCSB FM in Santa Barbara. This program is called In the Spotlight, where we highlight an artist every single week. This week's artist, Kid Karma, with... Oh, uh, Pink Lemonade. Pink Lemonade. Well, Pink Lemonade is not is what in the Hydro Flask. Sorry. There. Uh, no, hydration is important. <laughs> That's the theme of this concert, this KCSC exclusive concert. Of yes. course, yes. It is actually getting kind of warm and remove the sweater. Um, so, should I talk about this song? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I have, I have, I have music theory questions, but we can hear the backstory. Oh, yeah, the music theory questions. No, okay. <laughs> um, backstory, uh, I had to write a song for because I was in, not, not a talent show, my school has a thing where... It's like a beauty pageant, but for the guys at the school. It's supposed to be funny, you know. It's to have dumb talents. They have dumb acts. We're supposed to do dumb dances. And it's, just, it's fun. It's really fun. And I got nominated. And <clears throat> I was supposed to do a talent. And, you know, some guys are doing dumb talents. Some guys are doing real talents. And I was like, you know what? I'll do a real thing. Like, I have an actual thing that I can do that most people don't know about. So um, I wrote this song in, like, two days. Wow. Two days. Um, but, you know, it's it's just kind of the luck of the draw things. Things kind of just flow all of a sudden. And that's kind of what happened. Um, I'm sure you can guess there's a lot of Rex um, inspiration there. But um, the lyrics, actually, I, th- I, th- I think are decent in this one. So it's about me realizing that... It's happier, happier song. That I don't need romantic love in my life. 
if I have friends and family because that's what really matters and romantic love will come in time and it's not something that I should be looking for because the more I look for it, the more I won't find it. That is the basic uh, theme of that song. If I can find the lyrics, I'll go delve into it just a little bit more. Let me f just... Yeah, no rush. This is, this is <laughs> a relaxed concert. We're here with the people in their cars, probably. Maybe they're at a party. If you're at a party and you got the last couple songs before Pink Lemonade, uh, I am deeply sorry. That was probably not a uh, <laughs> not an a uplifter, real <laughs> a real party song. <laughs> For um, those of you just tuning in, uh, this was Kid Karma's fourth song out of seven that we're gonna have, and the first three were increasingly depressing. Yeah, they were really good. Thank you. I really like them. <laughs> um, so actually, I wrote the song during a time when there is a girl. I was who was actually interested in me first. I wasn't like I didn't even try. She, for the first time in my life, <laughs> for the first time in my life, I know God, that sounded awful. You're but, good. You're good. Um, uh, so, and I was like, oh, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm interested as well. But then she kept it was on and off thing with her. I think it was more of a power trip for her because I, I, I'm just I'm just like gloating so much. But like I was I was a little more popular in high school, so I guess she thought it was cool to you know. Like, you know, be with the guy who's popular, but she didn't really like me, I don't think. I think she just liked the idea of, um, you know, being able to control someone of that status. <laughs> but, um, so, in... Pink Karma is not egotistical. I can see the pain on his face <laughs> as he tells the story. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just, it makes me feel so terrible saying those things about myself. But, um, so... The beginning is to so let the rain keep us in bed and say all the things we should have said, which is just basically, you know, romanticizing the idea of what it would be like to be in a relationship with someone you actually love, which is what I always think about. But the next line is, but I don't love you and you don't love me more, which is just putting things into reality perspective and like understanding that, uh, not that true love doesn't exist, that it's not, um, that wasn't it, that that wasn't it with that person. Um, when patience was a virtue in my mind, um, when patience was a virtue in my mind, my bad, when, like, I was, wasn't always trying so hard for things that usually just come in time. Um, I'm just gonna move on to the chorus, I guess. Um, the chorus kind of just came, it weren't exactly profound lyrics, I just thought that whatever rhymed, rhymed, because I had to do it in two days, because the thing was in three days so I just had to kind of throw something down for the chorus but the verses came out great I don't know was that uh, before before going there was that three day limit like the limits of the competition or is that just good old high school procrastination procrastination is absolute procrast well because I kept saying everybody was everybody in the comp in the in the talent show thing was like what are you doing for your talent what are you doing what are you doing everybody was like oh I don't know yet I don't know yet I'm gonna do a magic trick I'm gonna do one backflip you know, like, <laughs> but I'm gonna make it like a really long long build up so it's really cool but like I was, I was debating over what I was gonna do basically if I wanted to be stupid or not and so that's why I procrastinated so long um yeah uh, the verses. Right, yeah, sorry. You off. Of course. Um, Mia culpa. Second verse. Because <laughs> uh, I've been chasing tail like a twisted dog. I thought that was clever. <laughs> um, you, I think you get it. <laughs> um, um, let's see, is there anything else clever along there? No, everything else is pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah, so that song was meant for talent shells, kind of a dig towards a girl who was on and off with me. And that's about it. Yeah. Oh, let me explain the title really quick. Go Pink Lemonade it. and Lemonade. I don't know. I did a taste test with my family one time. Couldn't tell a difference. I know there's a lot of people who would argue with me on that one. I just, I couldn't. I couldn't. I think the only difference is that one's pink and one's yellow. And so what I'm just trying to say is that, like, although there are different kinds of lemonade and like looks to them love is the same all around so that's what lemonade that's the resemblance there it looks like our editor is willing to start a fight with you on that one. Oh, okay so, <laughs> let's, apology let's, let's agree to disagree here and avoid bloodshed uh all right music theory questions yes i was noticing uh one that you're changing tempos very often oh yeah oh yeah yeah um so i took i was so as i was writing the song i was like wow the tempos don't match at all but 
I thought it was cool. Water. Sorry. Water. Hydration. Water. Theme of the concert. Mm. This uh, is this is Hydro Homies <laughs> with Kid Karma. Um, so the tempo changes I realized didn't fit at all, but I was thinking, you know what? There's a lot of songs that change tempo all the time. I mean, okay, I'm not going to compare my song to Bohemian Rhapsody, but Bohemian Rhapsody changes tempo intermittently throughout the entire song, and it's like f three or four different songs mashed together. So I, I just kind of went with it. Also, since there was a time limit to it, I was like, you know what? I can't, I don't have time to fix this. I'm just going to stay stick with the tempo changes. And in the end, I think the tempo changes kind of make the song a little more unique, if yeah. anything. I got a message from our editor. Hydro homies? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. I stand by my statement. <laughs> um, do you have any other theory questions about that song? You tended, when you, and this might be answered by your answer to the previous one, mm. but when you switch from the really fast, like, staccato, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, quick chords to the uh, slower pace part, you would do this, like, really elongated, uh, drawn-out chord. I was wondering what chord that was. So, from here to here, that one. Um... So that chord is an I do not you know. You can play it louder for oh, Okay, yeah. So I'm assuming that's what you're referring to. Um, so the first one is I name know the name of that chord. It's an F, it's a B major seven and that goes into I I wanna call it a C sharp nine, but I know it's not. I don't know what it's called, but I use it all the time. Which is terrible of me but i <laughs> it's all good i learned it in a rec song and i was like it sounds good i'm gonna throw it in there so that's the theme song hilarious. for this channel for not this channel this is not youtube <laughs> the theme song for this program on kcsb was made when i accidentally hit a wrong note while i was oh playing a g, mm -hmm. g minor chord on the piano and i'm like that sounded cool i know and then I just did that three more times and made a four chord song. <laughs> and accidents are the best, I swear. The accident I think that song is mostly comprised of accidents, actually. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, there was one lyric in there that I think I really should explain. So there was one lyric in there where I say, um, um, I don't even need a girl because I got like 50 of them saying they love me every day, which is terribly obnoxious, I know. But um, so during the performance... Um, oh, I'm the, I was on the cheer team in high school. I was on the cheer team in high school as the only guy. Rad. So I knew they were all going to be there because our coach gave us the n night off of practice so they could come watch me. So I knew that all 50 of them would be there to watch the performance. And you know how cheerleaders are screaming and being obnoxious and loud as they are. So, you know, I was like, it will make sense if I say that in the song because they will be screaming and saying my name. And sure enough, it did. So that, that's that's the reference for that. It doesn't make it any less obnoxious, but it is true. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. I just feel like I had to explain that one. Uh, any other theory questions? Uh, the staccato chords. Mm. What about could, them? You, could you play them again? Oh, yes, of course. I need to refresh my memory and refresh the audience's memory, especially for the people who are just tuning in. Mm -hmm. To change from the first one to the second one. That. They sound really similar, but it sounds like a big change in like the tone. Interesting. Like the second one makes me go, whoa! <laughs> and makes my inner jazz nerd really happy. Got it. Okay. Um, that is actually the same one as it's the same. It's the same? Mo mo motion, movement, like same shapes. It's the same two shapes. Just um, the staccato one is moved up. One, two, three, four, five frets. And um, this part is like literally at the very, it's a B, so yeah. But they're the same shapes, just up and down the guitar. Yep. It's amazing how the tonal difference and just the tempo gives it such a different feel to it. So it's just two chords there and... The part I'm, I was super happy about as a chord change was literally from one chord to the exact same chord. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am outed myself as a lightweight jazz music nerd. <laughs> I get excited when there's a major seventh chord. Anywhere, yeah. Yeah, so do I. So do I. I understand that feeling. Um, yeah, that song was interesting. Oh, if you... Uh, I'm one more, one more real quick thing Go about the song. Go for it. Um, so the girl who the song was not about, but she was mentioned. Um, I don't want to give her that kind of credit. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but um, I think it's I think it's best if we do not mention this person. Oh yeah, no, I'm not gonna say your name, of course not. Um, but so afterwards, she was like, kind of like, wouldn't we were still kind of talking on friendly terms, but like all of a sudden she stopped talking to me, and I was like, hmm, it's probably because of the song, right? But she like wouldn't say it out loud, and eventually when I finally got her to say it out loud, then we started talking again for some reason, like actually talking, and then that ended up bad. But, yeah, so that was, yeah, I, don't, I didn't need to mention any of that. I do not know if I should ask a follow-up question. Oh, go ahead. What happened? With, in, in the very end? Yeah. The very end, I took her to prom, um... I guess... You do I, not have to answer this question. Oh, you can play a fit song. I don't... I don't... People know who I am, right? <laughs> other, than, <laughs> other than by the alias I gave, right? Yeah. Okay, so I, I don't really care. We um, haven't said your name, Robert Williams, on air yet. That's not actually his name. <laughs> um, uh, so, took her to prom. Um, I guess I expected too much out of the experience. And she was, at the same time, she was looking for a reason to be mad at me because she, she wasn't into the idea of being of, of attachment, I guess. So I wanted too much. She wanted less. And so she found any reason to get mad at me, and then she did, which was me getting mad at her friend who was lingering around us. And um, then I never s have spoken to her again. And it's okay. She wasn't a, she wasn't a great person, I'll be honest. Well, all right. <laughs> You want to give us the, your fifth song? Yes, of course. We should really move on from that. Um, it was it was the happiest song. It's, it, it was just, that just, so which far. is funny, right? <laughs> oh, you know, so funny enough, this song is about the same person. Great, <laughs> <laughs> great segue. So, so now you know the backstory. Exactly. So it was all planned. Yes, of course. That's actually that's why I have this in this order. But so sh this, I took her to an aquarium for a first date. So. Um, at the aquarium, if you haven't been, there's huge windows where you can view all the fish and everything, but it's like underground, so the sunlight pours through the top of the water, through the window, and down to the platform underground where you're standing, so like, it's awesome, it's great. And that was the first time I like, kissed her, so then I wrote the song immediately after that. <laughs> it's great, what else can you get inspiration, right? So. This song is supposed to have three guitars, by the way, but I can only play, I only have so many hands, so. Ahem. <sighs> My heart was racing at a million miles an hour I was six feet underwater and I'm drowning like a coward. They were racing. Just to get to finish lines that I don't really care about So why don't we just take our time I've tried I, but I can't help it Day by day and time goes by I'm a fool, I drown for you, for you, and I'm cliche like stowaways and ships at bay, and the sunlight. Broken into little pieces Dancing all along your body Like the ocean set in sequins But she's laughing And the whole world melts away Like your kisses in the sun Into sunflowers on my grave Tonight I'll sleep for once At peace and dream I'll dream and dream of nothing I'm a fool, I'd drown for you, for you And I'm cliche like so always and shit 
lips This is KCSB FM and Studio Transmitter Link KKT 91. KCSB is owned and operated by the Associated Students of the University of California at Santa Barbara. Licensee is the Regents of the University of California with offices in Berkeley. KCSB operates at an assigned center frequency of 91.9 megahertz with an effective radiated power of 620 watts by authority of the Federal Communications Commission in Washington, D.C. Our studios and offices are located in the Stork Communications Building on the UCSB campus. Our transmitter is located on Broadcast Peak in the Santa Ynez Mountains at an elevation of 1028 meters above sea level or 4,020 feet. Please address correspondence to General Manager, KCSB FM, P.O. Box 13401, University of California, Santa Barbara, California, 93107. This is KCSB FM. 91.9 in Santa Barbara. Good day. You're listening to KCSB FM 91.9 in Santa Barbara. The following show may contain material that you may find objectionable, inappropriate, unsavory, or simply dastardly. Wait, I don't, I don't actually think that's a word. Anyway, anyway, if you find it to be any of these things, please do change the dial and return in one hour. Not only will there be a new show, but I will have fetched a new cup of tea and crumpets. Although I don't see the crumpets at the moment, and there's also little crab cakes running about, and I don't know where they went either. Anyway, anyway, enjoy the show. It will be marvelous. All right. Welcome back to In the Spotlight, where we take a look at underappreciated, unknown artists and put them in the spotlight. I'm Ryan Shibeta. With me in the studio is Quil Sang. And our Artist of the Week is Kid Karma, here live in the studio right now. We just heard five of his songs, the last being... Um, do you want to introduce It's called it? Sea Legs. Sea Legs. And that played right before the studio ID and object warning we needed to play at since it's the top of the hour. So, what was the uh, inspiration for the chords for that song? Um, so actually, those are the same chords. Not exactly the same chords, but similar as... Um, wow, I just realized all my songs are inspired by Rex, but <laughs> it's the same. It's, it's gener generally the same chords as a... Um, wow, I'm blanking on the name. I'm blanking on the name. It, that song. Yeah. Do you remember the name of that song? Yeah, I can blank on the name. Um, it's a Rex Orange County song. It's a Rex Orange. I. That's all you need to know. Um, those are pretty much the same chords, moved almost all the way down the neck of the guitar to make it sound deeper and sadder and slower and less whimsical. Um, but yeah, those are that's the where I got those chord inspirations, and then I just the, just the way they're played, like I, we said earlier, the tempo really changes the mood of the song. So um, yeah, those are that's what that's what that is. Um, I'm just I'm just I'm just trying to find the name of yes, the song. We're on a quest. I can't believe I forgot the name of the song. Um, I mean, cool. Do you know it? I I've never heard of that. Is fair. Orange. Uh, that is an interesting one. Okay. That's my taste in music. Um, Quill, Quill has the real KCSB taste in the music. <laughs> <laughs> no um, it is called... It is Corduroy Dreams. Gosh, that's yes. what it's called. There it is. Yes, yeah, it's called Corduroy Dreams. Um, yeah, so that's, that's where I found the uh, <coughs> boards for that song. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> 
And but playing them slow, like I said before, it just gives an entirely different vibe. But you can hear the similarities. But because if I played it, you would be able to tell. And actually, that does yeah. come through at the very end when I play the. And that part is okay. That part is supposed to be three. That's the part that's supposed to be three guitars because there's supposed to be one playing this. All the way through, and then there's one that's supposed to be playing this all the way through. And then there's the one playing the lead harmony or melody. That part. So, if you could imagine with your mind all of them synced together, but because this is live and there's only me, that's all I can play. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... What's better than one Kid Karma? Three kid karma. <laughs> that would, yeah. I actually don't think I get along with myself, but yes. <laughs> um, there any other questions? Uh, sea legs. Sea legs. Sea legs. Odd title for a pseudo Rex Orange County song. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, I can explain that title as well. So, like I said, see, we were at the aquarium under a bunch of sharks and stuff, so. <laughs> That's that's where the C part comes in, but C legs is when you you're trying to get your silly legs. You're wobbly on a boat. You're not adjusted yet to the um, changing of tides and whatnot. So that's just symbolic of me uh, not being used to the way an actual the the movement of a, of becoming a relationship and moving too fast and then moving too slow and then yeah. So it was just me getting my sea legs, quote unquote. Um, yeah, that's why it's called that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, you want to move on to the penultimate song? Oh yes, of course. So. Oh yes, one more question. Oh. That quote just reminded me of the guitar pick. That are you gonna wait? Switching off the guitar. First one, Jesus. Asked if he showed her the song. Yes. That was a question I was supposed to ask. <laughs> oh. I just asked myself. I'm sorry, Quill. Uh, this was a question we were discussing while the studio IDs were playing. Have you shown uh, the person in that song the song that you just played on the radio? I have not. No, I have not. Um, actually, I know. I've, I haven't showed... Well, I've written all these songs. They're not all about different people, but I've... I haven't shown any of these songs to any of the people. They're about... None of them. None of them. Not a single one. Um, I guess the most you could count is when I played it at the, the Pink Lemonade at the talent show thing, but she didn't really know it was about her. And it's not even about her, like I said before. But, um, but yeah, I haven't shown any of them. Because, funny enough, they wouldn't... Like, it would just... would The timing would be terribly, terribly off. It wouldn't make any sense, and it would just push them further away. So, not a good idea. But you know, yay! You never know. I'm so I'm <laughs> no, such an good. uplifter, aren't you're I? You're good. God. Um. You're good. You know, uh, this is this is what the people need. <laughs> they do. <laughs> <laughs> they need I, this. Are you let sure? Me, let me explain. News is depressing. Uh, we feel like bad things keep happening. Your name is literally karma. Uh, yeah, that's everybody's sad, and you just bring that home. But you know, it's funny. I'm not. I'm really not. I don't act like a sad person. I don't, I'm yeah. not like super depressed all the time. I don't. I, it just. I guess it just goes into my music. So this is just the worst side of me you're seeing right now. I guess. Um, if this is the worst side we see, it's a pretty. You must be a pretty awesome person. Oh, this thank is, you very much. This is awesome music. <laughs> um. Yeah, so that that song. I, oh, I wrote a piano rendition of that song as well. I don't play piano. I just looked up how to play those chords on piano, and I guess I kind of I, I don't know. But uh, there is a piano rendition of that song. I like the piano version better, but we can't fit a piano in here, so it do be like that sometimes. Yeah, some, it's the, unfortunate. The struggles. Please donate to KCSB. <laughs> Give us all the money. I don't think we start. We have not started our donation drive yet. Uh, there's a sneak preview <laughs> soon. Soon. We will be asking you for money so that we can still do this. But not yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay. You want to play, play the sixth song? 
Um, I think that was was that six? Or, oh no, no, no that, that, was, was, that was five. That was five. That was five. This is five. six. So I'm actually gonna. Um, this is the first song. This is the first song that I wrote while I'm here in Santa Barbara. First song I wrote when I moved here. For those of you just tuning in, all these songs are in chronological order. Yeah. For how Kid Karma wrote them. Except for the very last one, just Ooh. because it's called Lullaby, so I might as well play it last. But this one is called um, On the Shelf, for obvious reasons, as you'll see. Um, so here it goes. <clears throat> Hope you enjoy. Uh, here we go. <laughs> I messed up. <clears throat> I messed up. I will replay that. <laughs> okay, here it goes. <laughs> this is like a lottery. A play, it isn't free. Paying with my pride instead of dollar bills While well, I think about her conversation Get the chills and they ain't the kind of chills you want A cold that I caught Talking to this girl that I really like Well I didn't even notice that mosquito bite Ow, more morphine e -e -e and allergies e -e -e. Well she's got a boyfriend, hell don't they all In that fraction of a second right before she calls And I'm sorry e -e -e. And I'm too weak e -e -e. It'll hold her up there with my bare hands Hands or to hold a conversation that isn't bland And I hate hearing myself tell the same story every time Eighteen and falling behind Just a little where the fuck was I? Busy and so pity was a lot of fun Being somebody I can't outrun I'm sorry for myself and nobody else Putting all my hope upon the shelf So one and two and three and four She says she's tired, looks a little bit bored So I asked her to my room Her it's all were there to greet me too Well, she's hot, I'm not Wax on, wax off We took an Uber at 11 o'clock and she asked me to, her roommates all were there to greet me too I hate hearing myself tell the same story every time Eighteen and falling behind Just a little where the fuck was I? Busy and so pity was a lot of fun Being somebody I can't outrun I'm sorry for myself and nobody else Putting all my hope up on the shelf One, two, three, four. I hate hearing myself tell the same story every time. Eighteen and falling behind, just a little where the fuck was I? And so pity was a lot of fun Being somebody I can't outrun I'm sorry for myself and nobody else Putting all my hope upon them This is like a lottery I play it isn't free Paying with my pride instead of dollar bills While I think about her conversation Get the chills
You're listening to 91.9 KCSB FM in Santa Barbara. I'm Ryan Shabetta. With me in the studio is Quil Say. And this program, In the Spotlight, has a guest on, Kid Karma, live in studio as I speak. Kid Karma just played, if you want to introduce it. Um, it's called On the Shelf, uh, first song I wrote up in SB. So, yeah. SB? Santa Barbara. Okay. Sorry. I wasn't sure if you said SB or SP. Yes, SB with a... Yeah. Buzz, buzz. Buzz, there we go. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a word for some reason. Um, yeah, so uh, I couldn't come up with a catchy title for it. It's just the main chorus again on the shelf. Um, that one was heavily inspired by the song that you might have heard earlier if you've been listening since then. Uh, by um, Front Bottoms, Twin Size Mattress. Heavily inspired by that. Although, actually, I don't think it sounds entirely like it very much at all. But, um, inspired by that, instrumentation-wise, lyric-wise, I, I don't know where I came up with most of that. But, um, I feel like that one has a lot of explaining to go through, so might as well <laughs> start that now. Go um, for it. Is that too loud? I feel like that, was, that one was really loud. Nope. We Apologies. can adjust the volume here, so. Okay, cool. Don't, don't, if you're being too, if you're playing loud, playing quiet, we can... Adjust it. We're okay, all that's good. cool. Okay, cool. The magic of radio. Got it. So, um, opening line, this is like a lottery I played isn't free. Um, paying with my pride instead of dollar bills. I think about a conversation and get the chills. Um, so, that's referring to, um, just when I, talking to someone that I'm interested in and how the things that come out of my mouth, it's 50-50 chance not even 50-50, it's like, it's like a lottery. It's like, I don't know if they're going to be things that I'm proud of as soon as I say them, or if I'm going to, you know, face palm after as soon as I say them, like, oh my, why would I say that kind of a thing? But, um, so that's why it's like a lottery, and, you know, um, I'm paying with my pride instead of dollar bills, and it makes sense. But when I think about our conversation and get the chills, you know how when you think about something you said earlier, you get that cringy feeling. Oh, oh yeah. That's, that's what I'm referring to. I'm sure we've all felt that yes. before the anthem of Generation Z. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, I also talk about um, a cold that I caught, which I did catch a cold because um, we were outside when we were talking, I guess. And um, But I'm also referring to the cold of, like, the virus of, like, not being sure of the things I say. Because I can say... I'm talk if I'm talking to a friend and telling him what to say, it's easy, but as soon as it comes down to me, it's like my mind doesn't remember what's what are logical things to say and which things aren't. Uh, yes. Yeah, you know, you know how that feels. Um, I didn't even notice that mosquito bite. Again, we were outside. Got bit by a mosquito. She was talking about it. I had no idea. She was like, oh my God, are you feeling these mosquitoes? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't feel it. That's because I was nervous. And my entire body was numb when I was talking to this person. But like, I like the little ow. Yeah, you like the right owl? There. Yeah, I, I like know. the owl. That's not, I, I shouldn't be doing, I want someone else to be doing that part because it's hard for me to go straight from that into the next part, but I've practiced. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. I like that part. Um, but yeah, that's also referring to just, it's just illustrating how nervous I'm around this person and like how I don't even feel things like a mosquito bite. Um, oh, so the line about morphine, more morphine, and then allergies. I actually have an allergy to morphine. I've undergone several, sur not several, three, three surgeries. And the first time we learned that don't give him morphine because he gets really, really itchy and develops a rash. So I just thought that was just, I had to put that in the song. How could you not? How symbolic, right? The thing that makes you feel better, actually, you're allergic to. So there's that. Um, uh, she's got a boyfriend. How don't they all? Of course. Yes, I was wondering. You're wondering. About that you're one. wondering about that one. Okay. What? Do you have? Did you have a specific question? What? Just. I was like, I saw. I saw Quill give like a. Hmm. Face. <laughs> <laughs> she's got a boyfriend. Hell, don't they all? Well, so basically, well, since I've been here at least, um, every girl I've attempted to talk to, I found out within about 15 minutes of the conversation that they are in a relationship. And it's, it's just, it just seems that way. I, it's, I, it's amazing. It really is amazing how many people are in relationships. And relationships with the people who are back home could be, could be, you know, 45 minutes away. It could be across the, f the nation. Like, I, and it, it boggles me why, but.
but I've never been in one, so I wouldn't understand. So I, it's just it's just depressing when you put all that effort. I put all that. I muster the courage to go talk to someone, and then like, oh, I'm in a relationship. I have a boyfriend. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Quill, can you cue up the yay sound effect? <laughs> what did you think it was? This is this know, is a question just... for you. Brick, come up here. Oh God. What did you think I was trying to imply? Oh no, I just know a bunch of lesbians, honestly. <laughs> Got it. No, okay, okay, that's, that's my friend fair. group. Um, that that the quote from Quill. If it was too far away, I don't know. I just know a bunch of lesbians, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I think I know like a total of three straight people at this point. So wow. that's where I'm at. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> then she does. Then I guess she doesn't kind of understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and yeah. Um, uh, let's see, where was I? Um, oh, I hate hearing myself tell the same story every time. Um, pretty self explanatory. I go through the same process every time and I lament over it and I wallow in my own self pity for a little bit. Like, oh God, I put all that effort in for nothing. And I hate hearing myself do that every time and I want something to change, but it doesn't. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Sorry for myself and nobody else. Yeah, it's, that's all, of course, pretty exp self-explanatory. Um, oh, so this part, the second verse, which is totally different from the first verse. Um, she says she's tired, looks a little bit bored. Um, I'm just, it, it, that's when I asked, uh, like, that's the thing I, I asked. I say, hey, how are you doing? And she says, and all she, all she can muster, and it's funny because I feel like I'm putting so much effort into what, of me going up to talk to her, and all she says is, fine. I say, how's your day? And she says, fine. And like, it's not a lot for me, but it feels like a lot for me. And um, then this girl in particular, we did, I actually messed up the next part of this, but it's the real, the, the actual lyrics are wax on, wax off. She's hot. I'm not. We took an Uber at 11 o'clock. She asked me to her roommates all were there to greet me too. Um, basically, I'm just saying that, um, no, we, we, so I, I went in an Uber with her back home after a party. And she was like, oh, you can come wait in my room, like, while for, for the lift or whatever to come get you. And I was like, oh, sure. Thinking it was like, you know, something more than just like, actually just come wait in my room because it's cold outside. And as soon as I got there, all our roommates were there. I'm like, okay, I'm an idiot for getting my hopes up. Um, and then I walked home. I told her that the Uber was there and I walked home. <laughs> so, but that's because it was, it, was, it was a nice night out, so I might as well have walked. Um, I think that's all the things. Oh, I re 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 reiterate the song, the re reiterate the line about um, it being like a lottery and me paying with my pride because um, I just want to repeat that part. And even though I know it feels like you're like, this song should be over by now, but I repeat it because I just want you to feel how it feels for me that that's what happens every time and it, I've never felt anything else. So that's that. Do you have any questions about like theory or anything, or meaning? I, I can talk about the guitar solo. Oh yeah, sure. It was very uh, cool. Oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a bit on a, uh, you know, it's just like it's like that every time, and I'm like, so how about that guitar solo, guys? <laughs> <laughs> that was really that was peppy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I could talk a little about bit about it if you yeah. want. Yeah. Um, just the process, because you had you had a lot of like different sections for it. Yes, it was a lot. It was a lot jazzier, which is interesting. Than, I know the rest of the song, right? Of course. Yeah. Um, which reminded me of like uh, Blink One Eighty Two a little bit. It's with exactly the high voice. what it is. That's it's what you're exactly going for. Well, I you're love hitting. Blink One Eighty Two. I that they Blink One Eighty Two is what taught me how to write music. But I'll go into that a little bit later. But um, the the um, what am I saying? Oh well, yeah, the solo that is actually completely 100% Blink-182 inspired. Um, it's from, so this part, that's reminiscent of, oh, how Fuck, I, I, don't think I, I don't think I played it right. Um, I don't think I played it right, but that's from Anthem Part 2 by Blink-182. Um, that's, the part I was trying to in, in capture, but it's just the tone of the song is sadder than that song. That song's really happy. This song was not entirely happy. And then this part, the 
That is from、um, the same song, actually, which is something like that. It kind of goes something like that. I don't think I'm playing it correctly, but it's also from Anthem. But I also think it's reminiscent of First Date, which is like. I forgot to play it, but yeah, it's reminiscent of it. It's hard for me to switch between it because all it is, they're the same chords, it's just tempo changes. So that's why it's hard for me to just go between the two because it's just hard. But,、um, same chords between the chords you're playing on the song and the Blink 182 chords or same chords in the guitar solo?、Uh, same shapes. I'm sorry. They're the same shapes, not the exact same chords. Ah. But they're just power chords. <laughs> they're power chords and octave shapes. That's literally it.、Um, But it's funny because, so actually, if I, in my mind, the solo has two parts. It has the. And it goes through a chord progression. It goes through C, or well, this is actually C sharp.、Yeah, then it goes to C. To play it for the, oh, yeah, for of course.、Version. So it goes C sharp, C,、uh, B flat, and then G sharp. And I add a little build. It just so I can get into the next part. And the next part, so that's the first half of this thing. And then the next part is just actually the same chords, but I'm playing single notes the first two times through, and then I'm playing the full chord the next two times through. So the first part is just. And it's the same exact notes, but just on a higher octave. And then it's almost like, okay, now you've heard both parts. Now let's put them together. One, two, three, four. And so it just gives a sense of completion. I think that's why it's catchy. That's why I think it's catchy, at least personally. But yeah, that's, that is the breakdown of that solo, pretty much. Yep. Rocking. <laughs> yeah, it's more rocking than the other songs. It,、um, yeah. Do you have any other questions about the. Where should I move、uh, on? The Blink 182. Like, you, you raise your voice, I think, a lot. It's, it works. You hit the notes. Barely. But, you, <laughs>、uh, but you, you, you off it a lot. Was that just for the Blink 182 effect? Since he, the guy who sings in that band has a tenor? Or right. Or、um, was it like an artistic decision for the song itself? So, I actually don't think I can sing that song without sounding like that. Because、um, it's. Pretty high for me.、Um, and the way I, you can kind of accomplish it, I think I, I was pretty out of tune on that one, but、um, is by making your voice nasally and high pitched and whiny. And it just kind of works. And that's what Tom DeLong, he's the、uh, main, he's not the main, but he's one of the singers in Blink 182. He is the voice that you usually associate with Blink 182. And it is,、um, he. He does this really nasally, whiny voice that he does by really blowing air through his nose more than through his chest or anywhere or from his diaphragm. And I don't think, he's real, I don't think he realizes it because that's just kind of the way his voice is. But you either hate it or you love it. Personally, I love it. That's why I emulate it. But I know there are a lot of people who hate it, but it's okay. I don't care. <laughs>、yeah. um, but there are parts in the song where I really use my normal voice, which is just the. Yeah, like this is like a lot of. Yeah, so. Um, but then I like it's kind of the same. It's, I, I think it's kind of the same thing as the solo, as I'm playing with my normal voice that's calm and low. You know, this is like a lottery. It's the same thing as playing single notes that are calmer and softer. But then when I go into the high part, 18 and falling behind. Just to, just to, so, like, that part is emulating, you know, the part in the solo where I go. So, it all just kind of, they're all reflections of each other. Just the same thing throughout the entire song, just different ways. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's that song. Yeah. I think、uh, we got, that was, we,、yeah. got the, we got the educational aspect <laughs>、yeah. of Casey's being there. <laughs> I didn't,、uh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I don't actually think I want to talk about the lyrics. Well, I, I don't want to talk about. You don't have the to. The people and the person in this movie. You、place. don't have to. <laughs> It's a little too current. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's,、uh, let's get the last song. The last song in there. The、okay. lullaby, right? It is called lullaby. Please, if yes, you're listening、is. in a car,、mm. 
Uh, this song is called Lullaby, but please do not go to sleep. <laughs> I do not want to be responsible for any car crashes, and I don't want you, the listener, to be in any car crashes. If you're just tuning in now on that on that uh, chipper note, you're listening to KCSB FM 91.9 in Santa Barbara. This program's In the Spotlight. That's the name of it. Uh, I'm Ryan Chibetta, our engineer, Quill Sang, our artist of the week, the guest, the educator, the professor you just heard, Kid Karma, here with his final song of the evening. Yep. This is Lullaby. I, I'm sorry, I have to tune this. It's like extremely out of tune. Go for it. Apologies. You're all good. You know, we're just building suspense. That's that's the uh, those of you who are uh, t- listening in. You get to hear this wonderful tuning. <laughs> I can I can speak about the song while I tune a little bit. Sure. I don't, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, so I was here over the summer for an event and. This is the same person. Oh, I just said I wasn't going to speak about the person, but um, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't no, have I'm to. not going. To. I can talk about this Arch and Lectures brochure and give all the new UCSB concerts that are coming up. You, if you want to do that while you, you see? You might. Tuning. Yeah. Can you can you do that, please? Thank you. I got I got you. All right. Uh, cool. Can you turn the lights on? Yeah, sure. Uh, the studio right now is very dark to get the mood lighting. Uh, but we're gonna. There we go. The lights are now on. All right, so today is, at the time of broadcast, February 9th, 1.32 a.m. So I'm going to go to, uh, this is the, I got the Arts and Lectures brochure for UC Santa Barbara, which is where this is being taped, uh, just at Stork Tower. And I'm going to start listing off the events that we got. The first one from the UCSB Arts and Lectures is David Brooks' The Quest for a Moral Life, where he talks about... uh, this guy was on All Things Considered. He was a guest on PBS NewsHour, a pretty, pretty accomplished person. And he is talking about his book, The Second Mountain. Uh, the quote we have right here, The soul is the piece of your consciousness that has moral worth and bears moral responsibility. So if that sounds... <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we got there. That's David Brooks. Uh, what we have after that, February 13th, 8 p.m., Campo Hall. Sammy Miller and the Congregation. Party jazz. Harken back to the 20s and 30s. It's brassy, stomp your feet, and dance music. And it's got the raw, uplifting vibe of a New Orleans street parade. That's a quote from San Francisco Weekly. After that, February 19th, uh, Anita Hill is talking from social movement to social impact, putting an end to sexual harassment. Uh, Anita Hill big feminist figure, symbol of Me Too, as it says in the New Yorker, and a powerful advocate for equality. You got your guitar tune? Yeah, it's good. Let's go. Okay. Cool. Without further ado, here is Lullaby by Kid Karma. Carried away by thoughts on a train in your Tired of going to sleep alone Brisk autumn air, a heart in repair You're so tired of running from nothing Keep falling, falling Sleep to this lullaby Sleep to this lullaby Fall in Fall in Sleep to this lullaby Sleep to this lullaby Closing your eyes I'll kiss you goodnight Cause you're tired of waiting up all the time Imagine yourself beginning to melt You're so tired of being somebody else 
fall in, fall in. Sleep to this lullaby, sleep to this lullaby. Fall in, fall in. Sleep to this lullaby, sleep to this lullaby. Thanks so much for joining us, Kid Karma. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> if you want to hype yourself up, this is the opportunity you have to do it. Um, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Like, uh, po like, give tell the people where they can find you. What? Oh, you can't. Sites? Unfortunately, I I literally have nothing. I've tried recording music. Um, the laptop I have for it is about ten years old, so it doesn't process anything. And the other nicer laptop I have doesn't have enough storage or RAM or whatever for recording, so I can't record anything ever. So this is the only thing you ever get to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm one day, though, one day, I'll be able to record all my stuff. Be, be on the lookout, and as for those of you tuning in, you just heard the only available <laughs> performance of seminal artist Kid Karma. Literally the only one. I know. Gosh, I did. I did perform. No, you're not. You're not. You're not slacking. You're exclusive. Mm, mm -hmm. Drink that water. Of Hydrations. Of yes. Course. Oh gosh, my voice is shot after all that. I think it's the biggest, longest performance I've done. <laughs> yeah. There's actually um, three more songs that I was supposed to perform, but due to unforeseen an, circumstances, an artist who will not be named. Yeah, she couldn't make it unfortunately. But um, maybe you'll get it here at one time. <laughs> one, one day. I don't know. But um, yeah. That last song was just a nice way to close out, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Stay awake. Stay awake, yes. If you're driving. Um, I just thought, like, you know, when I, well, when I, was, thinking, I was thinking about writing it, um, super simple song. There's supposed to be three guitars in that song, too. But again, can't play all three. Um, but... I was just thinking, I want a song to sing to my significant other or child when I'm older. Something really simple, something nice and slow, something not too sad or depressing to give them nightmares. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's what I came up with. I wrote that one in, act I actually wrote that one in 30 minutes. That one was really, <laughs> it's so simple, it's so easy. Um, I just like the visuals of the brisk autumn air, you know. It's, there's nothing too complicated about the lyrics. They're all extreme. It's it's not supposed to be a thought about song. So, mm -hmm. it's the simplest one. I won't talk too much about it because that's all there is to it, you know. Before you go, is there anything else you'd like to say while you have this, while you have the only opportunity? The only opportunity, right, of course. It's um, concert. Uh, something about writing music, I think, is that um, people always there are so many talented individuals especially not have gone to Santa Barbara I, I think one one in two one in three people I meet can sing play an instrument or do both better than I can and yet for some reason when I hear them play I they don't they don't they don't play anything original I know they have original stuff but they refuse to play it and it's just I, I just don't understand that and I think it's because people hold it, it a little more personal than I do maybe or they're insecure even though they're better than me at both things but I think that if we would all if every artist would put the amount of effort necessary into creating and put themselves out there that today's music would be so much more sophisticated and that everybody that the music that's popular wouldn't be the music that's popular people would be invested in more heartfelt meaningful things if people actually put themselves out there and put their genuine emotional music out there which i am not doing because i have not recorded anything but i'm just i, I just think that writing music is so liberating and it, it's yeah. it's unfortunate that people aren't and because because there's something about writing a song that 
is so it identifies who you are, whether you like it or not, and it's just it, it's for someone, especially myself, who has a hard time identifying like who I want to be and who what what things I should say and who I should be. I think a song is the only true form of who I am because it shows who I am, whether I like it or not. So I just think that people should, you know, give it a shot. Even if, because I know there are people too who are out there who are like, oh, I can't write a song. It's like, it's not, it's not hard. I just, I showed you exactly how I broke down another person's song and made it my own. Like, it's like, it's called inspiration. You could call it copying. I don't know. <laughs> it's you can go to, so you can go to Soundtrap, thing. which uh, hashtag not sponsored. Uh, it's a free, <laughs> free, like, so sound building thing on your browser. Interesting. And uh, is it... It's also Audacity if you want like more sound editing type stuff. <laughs> Soundtrap's more like the music composition. And is it going to be, you know, what the professionals use? Not at all. <laughs> but is it gonna work and let you express yourself? Heck yeah. Of course. Yes. You have. You just heard. You just got the TED Talk from Kid the Karma. TED Talk. Yeah. You have the opportunity. Yeah. If you're out there and you're listening and you want to do that. Uh, hopefully, this can help you out. Is it okay if I continue speaking? Yeah. Okay. Um, I also wanted to bring up the point about the people who say that they, or they're like, oh, I can never pick up a guitar. Oh, I can't sing. Oh, I can't do this or that. Um, clearly, I'm not like a virtuoso guitar player or singer, but, you know, I try, and that's kind of all that really matters, and you get to a point where it's tolerable, you know? And um, people... I, I, there was a point where people would be like, oh my god, please stop singing. You were burning my ears. But now it's like, I even get compliments sometimes. Some people are like, oh, you can kind of sing. I'm like, thank you. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been doing this since 8th grade. So yes. But also, <laughs> thing about guitar, on the other hand, um, any instrument really, uh, is that, of course, I'm just going to say practice. I'm saying, but And practicing, of course, you need to do that. But it's hard, I understand how difficult it is to just practice when it's hard. It is difficult and you can't find time in your day for it. You can't, I think you need to find personally a motivation for yourself to continue playing an instrument and continue to pick it up at least like 15 minutes a day and just having fun with it. And like that will get you to where you want to faster than you think. Um, like the reason I picked up a guitar Oh, well, big surprise! I bet you could guess. It's because the girl liked the guy who guys who played guitar. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna learn how to play guitar, and like I liked it. I loved it, and like that's actually most of my life decisions have been because of. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think you need people need to find their own motivation, personal motivation. It doesn't have to be a girl. Probably shouldn't be. It's unhealthy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, to pick up the guitar and continue to play or a piano or the oboe anything really and voice wise I really uh, voice wise I really felt the feeling of like you either have a voice or you don't and that's just actually not true I mean look at Louis like like the guy from Front Bottoms has not the best voice but he is still famous still writes amazing music and like let's say do you if you've heard of Hobo Johnson He's kind of a spoken word guy, but he also sings sometimes. Not a great voice, not a great voice, but there's something about it that's unique. When you don't have the like inert, like um, inherent, I meant talent to be able to sing, but you learn how to hit the right notes, your voice becomes unique yeah. rather than just being Bob Dylan for the mainstream. Bob yeah. Dylan, there you go, Bob Dylan. Even Rex Orange County, like he doesn't have this belting, beautiful voice like Louis Capaldi or something. He People like his voice because it's calming and it's deep and it's just, it's specific to him. Um, Tom Blong, like we were talking about earlier, has that whiny, nasally voice that people either love or hate. So you should really, if you want to, if it's something you're passionate about, don't feel discouraged. Just try it. I know it's hard to when you're in dorms and stuff, but <laughs> just go down the beach or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think, I think that's it. All right. I Thanks like, so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me and listening to me talk and talk and talk. Oh, my God. So, yeah. It was a good time. Kid thank Karma, you. available soon. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>